Hello, my name is Chris and today I want to talk to you about that awful, awful feeling of being just so completely overwhelmed by everything. And how to deal with those feelings of being overwhelmed without resorting to self-sabotaging behaviour. We'll also talk a little bit about how to deal not just with the overwhelming feelings but about how to deal a little bit with that mountain of stuff that is making us feel so overwhelmed in the first place. Sure many of us have our own ideas about what overwhelm feels like, about the tension, the stress, the headaches, that impending sense of oh my god everything's a disaster. We also probably have our own ideas about what self-sabotaging behaviour is for us. It might be smoking or drinking or eating junk food when we're trying to lose weight or spending too much money or whatever it may be. When I think about it, I think of overwhelm as being that sense of like, oh my goodness, there is just so much to do. I have to do all my work and I have to help this person with this and that person with that and I have to talk to my partner about this big important thing and I have to go and do this and, and I've got money troubles and family troubles and on top of all these things that are in my life right now, I personally, it feels like I personally have to hold the sky in place because if I don't hold the sky in place, it's all going to fall down. Ah! <clears throat> How exhausting and what a terrible, awful feeling that is. I feel so bad that many of us resort to self-sabotaging behaviours. Like I say, it might be that we've quit smoking, so we self-sabotage by smoking. Or we're trying to improve our health, so we eat junk food. Or we get blind drunk and ruin our sobriety. Whatever it might be. I know I faced this feeling exactly last week. I've shared in, in other videos, I've gone back to school, I'm retraining to become a qualified counsellor. And we have these assignments to do that are quite big and quite full on. And I'm, th and I'm sat there and I'm trying to figure out how to start my assignments. And it's like I've got to do this and earn a living and go grocery shopping and, and all this stuff. And oh my goodness, I can't do it. Ah! In the past, I would self-sabotage. I would go and smoke or drink or, or eat junk food and then beat myself up about it and make things ten times worse. That negative voice that goes, God, Chris, now you've smoked, now you've ate all the ice cream in the world, and now you're just fat and you're a loser, and all this negative self-talk comes in that just makes the situation worse. That's what normally happens. Last week, when I had these feelings of overwhelm, I decided I was going to do things differently. I was going to deal with this overwhelming feeling without self-sabotaging. What I'm about to share with you today is how I did that. The first thing that we can do to deal with these feelings of overwhelm is simply to acknowledge and accept them. There's that famous cartoon on the internet of the little dog and his whole house is burning down and he's just sat there at his table like this is fine, this is fine and this whole house is burning down. When we are overwhelmed, especially when we have got deadlines or stuff that we have to get done, that it has to be dealt with, we can lie to ourselves as well as other people that this is fine. We say, don't worry, it's okay, I can cope with this. I'm strong enough, I'm capable enough, I can cope with this. And we ignore the fact that, you know, deep down we're really stressed, we're really anxious. We may be losing sleep or not eating properly, but this is fine. And we keep going, we keep saying like, if I, just, I just have to keep pushing forward. I just have to keep going. I just have to keep sitting here in this bloody big burning house. And we do this because we feel as if, if we don't just keep going, then the stuff won't get done. I have to do this stuff, so I just have to keep going. Plus, there's this feeling of, 
if I stop and if I accept that I'm struggling, then that means that I am stupid or that I am weak or that I have failed. No, it doesn't. When we accept that we are overwhelmed, it means that we are actually strong enough and smart enough to acknowledge that simply the method that we are trying isn't working and that we can then go and try another method. So now that we have accepted this and we, we acknowledge, okay, look, I'm just overwhelmed. It's fine, it happens to everybody. We stop what we are doing and we take ourselves out of that stressful place that we are in. If we are in a burning building, we can't extinguish the fire from inside the building. We need to go outside because if we are inside, the smoke is going to choke us. The flames are going to engulf us. We're going to get burned and badly damaged. So we need to come out of that stressful situation. Just stop. Just If you're at your desk, walk away. If you're in the kitchen, walk away. Wherever you are, stop and leave that space and take care first and foremost of how you are feeling physically. <sighs> Don't know if you've ever done this, I know I certainly have. It's like, oh my goodness, I've got so much to do that the only way I'm going to get the energy to get through it is to drink all the coffee in the entire world. There are people lining up at Starbucks who are mad at me because they're like, oh my goodness, Chris drank all our coffee and I'm like, I've got to get this stuff done, I need the coffee. <laughs> it's terrible, right? And then we drink all the coffee and then a few hours later we're sat there going, oh my God, I'm really anxious and I don't know why I'm anxious. Uh -uh. Because we just got off our heads on coffee. So if that's the case, I'm like, okay, maybe I need to lay off the caffeine for a little while. Maybe I need to ask myself some important questions about how I'm physically feeling. Do I need to eat something? Do I need to go and take a nap? And if I do, then unapologetically and unashamedly go and take that nap and I'll feel better when I wake up. Trust me, the stuff that is causing me to be overwhelmed, it'll still be there in an hour's time if I go and lie down, right? When I had this moment last week when when the college assignments just got too much for me and just got overwhelmed, I stopped and I just left them there and I walked away and I went and had a shower. I cleansed all that stress off me, just, ah, just feel better. I had something to eat and then I got on my mountain bike and I just went outside. Not to go anywhere, just to be outside. I can't stress to you how much of a difference being outside has made to my mental health. I've shared before about my problems with, with depression and anxiety and things like that. And I find that the one thing that helps me is more than anything is fresh air and daylight. So if you are feeling particularly overly anxious right now, please for me, go and spend more time outside. And yes, I'm talking to you Staying inside all day is not going to do us any good. Just go and get 10 minutes of fresh air. <sighs> Taking care of myself physically so that mentally I can be in a better frame of mind to come back. Eventually I'm going to come back to this stuff that is overwhelming me and find a better, more effective way to manage it. So, okay, so I've removed myself from all the stress and the overwhelm. I've taken care of myself physically. I'm not hopped up on coffee. I've eaten, I've slept, I'm feeling good. I can now come back to all this stuff and figure out how to deal with it. And how I deal with it is by picking one priority, not a list of priorities, one priority, which for me is my college assignments, for you, it might be work or looking after the children or whatever it may be. 
I decide that this one priority is where I'm going to focus as much of my attention and effort and energy as possible. All the other things, I'm going to write a list. Everything else that, that needs to be done or that I believe needs to be done and I'm going to be realistic about them. And I'm going to get through them by using one of four Ds. That's four, right? One, two, three, four. I can drop it, I can defer it, I can delegate it, or I can simply do it differently. I've decided that my one priority is my assignments. So as much as possible, that's what I'm going to be working on. There are other things I can just drop it. There was an event that I wanted to go to and I was looking forward to, but I'm just going to drop it. It's not that important, or at least it's not so important that I'm willing to sacrifice time spent on my assignments with. Then there are things that I can delegate. I can ask for help with them. Like if you're working, if you've decided that, you're, that meeting a work deadline is your one priority, but you still have to go home and cook for the family, maybe you can delegate and get the partner to do the cooking for you. You know, or, or get some help at work or whatever it may be. Then there are things that we can simply defer till later. Stuff that is like, okay, this is a really good idea and I'd love to work on it and I'd love to, look, I would love to help you with this, but right now I can't. Let's come back. Let me finish my assignments or my deadline or this or that. And later down the line, this thing is still going to be here. So we will come back to it later. Then there are things that I can do differently. I can say my, my assignments are my priority right now, but my health is still very important to me. I still have to take care of me physically. But I can do that differently. Like, since these assignments started and stuff, I haven't been to the gym at all. I used to love going to the gym, and I haven't been for a while now. Because going to the gym takes three or four hours out of my day. I have to physically, you know, get myself ready, travel to the gym, do my workout, get changed, have a shower, travel home again. That's three or four hours, right? Whereas I can do a 40 minute workout at home instead. I may not have all the state of the art equipment that I have at the gym. I may not even get as good a workout at home as I would at the gym. But that workout will at least be good enough. And that brings me to my next point of letting good enough be good enough. For those of you who are subscribed to my Patreon. This week's bonus video I'm going to talk a lot more about letting good enough be good enough. You can check that out if you go to chrisscoils.com slash support or patreon.com slash chrisscoils. All the details are there you will find this bonus video where we are going to talk about letting go of the need for perfection because quite often one of the big causes of overwhelm isn't necessarily the amount of stuff, it's these impossible standards we set for ourselves. Like our boss says to us, okay, I want you to make a thousand pencils by Friday, and we go, oh, well, okay, I'll make two thousand pencils by Wednesday because that's better. So we need to let go with that and just, just let good enough be good enough. can also do is reach out and talk to somebody about how we're feeling overwhelmed and not only does it help to just go there and just get all this stuff off our chest and just say look this is how I'm feeling right now trust me that feels good but you also may find that people can help in unexpected ways I went to college to class on Monday and I shared, you know what, I'm just feeling overwhelmed with these assignments. It wasn't a complaint, it was just a matter of fact. Quite a few other people also went, you know what, I'm feeling overwhelmed as well. 
So on the one hand, it's like, okay, great, it's not just me. There, there's that reinforcement that, you know, if I needed it, that I'm not bad or weak or wrong. I just, you know, lots of people are in the same position. And we all shared about this. And by the end of the class, our tutor had extended the deadline for one of the assignments by another week. So miraculously, we get this extra bit of time now. And it's just a little less pressure. We can talk to people and say, Do you know what, I'm just feeling really under it. Under, under well, uh, overwhelmed and under pressure. That was a tongue twister. You know, they may be able to offer help that we hadn't thought of, or just to be there, just why we just vent. If you don't have someone to vent to, come and vent to us. We have our facebook.com slash group slash uh, finding freedom one, the finding freedom Facebook group where we're all getting together to talk with each other about quitting smoking and how we're dealing with that and, and people are being very supportive on there and it's, it's a great resource if you haven't come and joined up yet I'll put the link down in the description below we would love to see you there feeling overwhelmed just with all that having to say all that stuff that's quite a lot right but I hope it's been helpful to you and just giving you some suggestions or some, some ideas about how to deal with things the next time you are feeling overwhelmed without having to just go and change the way you feel with a drink or a cigarette or junk food. I should also add one final quick tip which is just to break things down. I talk in all my quit smoking videos about breaking quitting smoking down from quitting smoking forever into a day, into an hour, into half an hour. Do the same thing with the tasks or the things that you have to deal with. Break them down into the smallest components and take a break after each one. So that it's not just breaking them down and, and but then doing them all one after the other anyway. It's we do this, okay, I've accomplished something, I'm feeling good, I've accomplished something. Now move on. Now, so we take a break. Recharge. Make ourselves feel physically and mentally good again. Come back. Do the next little bit. Take a break. Recharge. Come back. You get the idea, right? As I say, I hope this has been helpful to you in some way. Thank you so much for watching. If you have your own suggestions on how you deal with overwhelm, please let me know in the comments below. For more weekly videos like this one, please do consider subscribing. And with that, I shall wish you a wonderful, peaceful weekend. I'll see you next week.